Language, whether it's in complex lettering, symbols, or even hand signs, is fundamental in communicating with one another. It's no wonder that there are between 5,000 to 7,000 languages in the world. Let's take a look at three items with undeciphered inscriptions that we still haven't figured out. Rangorango is a system of glyphs discovered in the 19th century on Easter Island that appear to contain writing. The first historical record of these writings was written by Eugene Arad. He was a lay friar who landed on Easter Island on January 2nd, 1864. While residing there for nine months, he wrote the following. In every hut, one finds wooden tablets or sticks covered in several sorts of hieroglyphic characters. They are depictions of animals unknown on the island, which the natives draw with sharp stones. Each figure has its own name, but the scant attention they pay to these tablets leads me to think that these characters, remnants of some primitive writing, are now for them a habitual practice, which they keep without seeking its meaning. Some of these tablets were collected in 1868, just four years after the account of Friar Erod. However, within that four years, most of them were missing. Of the 26 commonly accepted texts that survive, only half are in good condition and are authentic beyond doubt. Numerous attempts were made to decipher these intriguing tablets, but none were successful. If Rangorango does prove to be writing, and proves to be an independent invention, it would be one of the very few independent inventions of writing in human history. Oral history suggests that only a small group of people were literate and able to read the tablets at the time. This group of people were referred to as the wise men by the inhabitants of the island. As they died, none of the remaining inhabitants were able to read them. Interestingly, they still carved the characters onto the wood, using shark teeth and other sharp tools, but had no understanding of what is said. Most of the remaining tablets are now scattered in museums and private collections. The Singapore stone is a fragment of a large sandstone slab. In June 1819, a few months after the arrival of Sir Stamford Raffles in Singapore, a sandstone slab about 10 feet high and 10 feet long was found by laborers clearing the jungle trees at the southeast side of the mouth of the Singapore River. Unfortunately, in 1843, they needed to widen the mouth of the river where the slab resided, so they ended up blowing it up to pieces. To make it even worse, parts of the blown up pieces were used as gravel. Originally, the slab was inscribed with 50 or 52 lines of script. The inscription was engraved in rounded letters about three quarters of an inch wide. Only a few pieces were preserved and is now displayed at the National Museum of Singapore. It was designated by the museum as one of the 11 national treasures in January 2006. The large slab, which is believed to date back to at least the 13th century, and possibly as early as the 10th, bore an undeciphered inscription. Recent theories suggest that the inscription is either in Old Javanese or in Sanskrit. The Rohans Codex is an illustrated manuscript book by an unknown author. The Codex was named after the city of Rohans in western Hungary where it was kept until 1838. The language it's written in is unknown just like its origin. The book was discovered in the 19th century in Hungary and has been investigated by many scholars. Some believe it to be a hoax. The codex has 448 pages, each one having between 9 to 14 rows of symbols, which may or may not be letters. Besides the text, there are 87 illustrations that include religious and military scenes. The crude illustrations seem to indicate an environment where Christian, pagan and Muslim religions coexist as the symbols of the cross, crescent, and the sun are all present. The number of symbols used in the codex is about 10 times higher than any known alphabet. When the paper it's written on was studied, it was found to be Venetian paper, made in the 1530s. The codex is now kept at the Library of Hungarian Academy of Sciences. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more content.